Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us for our 1 p.m. live demonstration here at Arizona Science Center. My name is Gabby and today we're going to be doing a squid dissection. So this is going to be a real squid just as a warning. If you get a little queasy, I won't be offended if you tune out. We're going to be very respectful today with our specimen and learn a lot about these critters that live underwater. So squids are in a group called cephalopods, and a cephalopod means a uh, head foot, and you'll see why in just a second. They're a little mixed up from us. We have our head, our body, our appendages down at the bottom. They're a little different. They're figured out a little differently. So we're gonna go ahead and switch the screen over so that you guys can see our squid here. All right, here it is. So this is a pretty common squid. There's tons of different species of squid that live in the ocean. They live in oceans worldwide. They can be anywhere from about this big, even smaller, some around this big, up to 40 feet or so. The giant squid is up to 43 feet or so. Colossal squid, even bigger than that, 46 feet. There's around 500 species of squid, they guess, and not all of those are known. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at how this squid is laid out you're gonna see why it's head foot in just a second. So this up here is called the mantle. Now this looks like the head of the squid, but this is kind of more of the body. So inside the mantle is where the heart, the stomach, and all of the organs are located inside of. Up at the top of the mantle, they have two fins that they use for swimming and guiding through the water. That's one way that they use for locomotion. Now, when we get down here towards the middle of the squid, this is actually gonna be the squid's head. So right inside the middle is the brain. There's two eyes, one on this side and one on this side. They have pretty good eyesight as well. They can see light and dark colors in the water, not quite as good as a vertebrate like us. And then they have appendages down at the bottom. Does anyone know what these are called down here? They might share a similar name with octopi. So these are the arms and tentacles. So they actually have 10 in total. They have eight arms, which are these shorter appendages, and they have two tentacles, which are these much longer ones. Do you notice a difference between the arms and the tentacles? So if you look at the arms carefully, you'll notice that there's little suckers along the entire length of the arm. And the tentacles are much longer, these long appendages, and they just have suckers at the very end. So they use these for grabbing onto prey. They bring the prey up to their mouth. They use these smaller arms to bring the food into the middle of their mouth, and their mouth is right in the center here. So right in the middle of all of those arms is the mouth. And they actually have something in common with a bird. How might an ocean critter like this have something with a bird? So right inside of their mouth, they actually have a beak similar to a bird. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can pull out the beak here. Now, a lot of squid, they eat a variety of things. They eat a lot of uh, mussels and crabs and um, kind of little shelled organisms. So they use their beak to bite through those crunchy shells and consume those. This one's in pretty far, so I'll see if I can grab this out. I'm gonna cut a little bit inside through the arms here so that we can see the beak. Now the beak also sits inside of a big muscle that helps the squid kind of chew. All right, here we go. So here's one piece of the beak. And then here is the other piece of the beak. Now these fit together inside of the mouth and they pinch just like a bird beak. And they use that again to crunch down on those shells and anything that they're eating, bring that into their mouth and then through their head up to their digestive system. Now, if you're taking a look at the outside of the squid, a few more features on the outside, you can see these little polka dots. Can you see those there? So these are called chromatophores, and they help a squid change color. Why would a squid want to change color? 
Now this is a super cool adaptation that they have to help them camouflage. This can be to escape predators or to hide and attack prey. Now they don't quite change very crazy color, mostly just from light to dark, and that might help them blend in with different areas in their environment. On the back of the squid, they also kind of have a giant pump. So right back here, that if I can poke my little prodder in here, if you can see this opening, this is called the siphon. Now the siphon is a super cool adaptation the squid has. This helps them swim like a jet. They pump water into their mantle, back out their body, and it helps them push through the water. This is also how they poop. They push their um, waste out of the siphon. And then if you've ever heard, maybe in Finding Nemo, when she's like, aw, you made me ink. Squids actually do ink, and we'll talk about that in just a few minutes, but they'll push their ink through the siphon as well. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and take a look into the squid and cut along the inside, the mantle here. Now again, the mantle is what's holding all of their organs, the inside of their body, so their body is kind of above their head, which is a little unusual. All right, so now that we got to the inside of the squid, there's not too much that's inside, um, but this one's actually pretty interesting. Uh, we have some cool features in here. So if everyone wants to take a deep breath in while they're sitting, deep breath in, deep breath out. So what are we breathing? What are we using to breathe? So we breathe oxygen and we get that oxygen from the air. And from the air, we're using our lungs to pick up that oxygen. But squids live underwater like fish, so they can't have lungs like we have. Does anyone know what they have? If you said gills, you are exactly correct. So they have two kind of rows of gills, one that sits along here, that's this little flap here, and one that sits on this side. And they pick up water on those gills when they pump water in and out of their body through their siphon. So here's one of their gills. You can see it's very, very feathery here. And this expands, opens up, gets really fluffy to help pick up the oxygen and keep the squid fueled. They also have organs and intestines, just like we do. They have an esophagus, which is where they're getting their food in through their mouth. That travels up to their stomach. They have a huge digestive gland that goes all the way back up to the top and then back out of the bottom. Their heart's kind of central right in here. So this little bean is actually their heart, so in the middle of all their stomach and intestines. And then it's starting to open. So if you see this little kind of silvery line here, this is the ink sac. So this is where they have ink inside of their body. So if we cut this open, you can see how dark this ink is. It's a little dried out, but it's very crumbly and concentrated. And they push this out into the water. Why would a squid want to push ink out into the water? So they use this as an adaptation to escape prey as well. So things like sharks, they're trying to munch on squid. So they push this out into the water and it makes a dark cloud that's difficult for predators to see through and then they can easily swim away. So they create this inside of that ink sac, produce it, store it, and eject it into the water. Now some of you might be slouching when you're sitting at home, I know I am, but if you stand up straight really, really quick, what do you have in your back that's allowing you to stand up straight? You have a spine. So your spine is made out of bone. And the squid has something kind of similar, but made out of a different material. They have something called the pen, which is made out of chitin. So this here is their backbone. But as you notice, there's a lot of differences between ours. It's clear, it's very flexible, similar to the cartilage in our ears and noses. So this allows squids to swim through the water very fast, lots of fit through very small spaces. They can fit through anything that's essentially as big as like their head and their beak here, because that's the hardest part of them. So again, this is their pen. It supports their body and the structure in the very back of the squid. All right, now we actually have a female squid here. So as you can see at the top, there are some eggs inside of this squid. 
So squids do lay eggs like a lot of other fish and creatures like that. So once they're ready to give or to, to get their eggs fertilized, they push that out to the water. They also push that through their siphon here. So again, female squid, the male squids do not have this up in top. So they're very mixed up. Ovaries up at the top, organs, heart in the middle, head down at the bottom. Now let's see if we can take a peek at the skull, in, or sorry, uh, the, uh, the brain inside. So they have chitin in their uh, head as well that's helping protect um, their brain, connecting to their eyes. So just like us, they need some protection in the structure just like that. And if we open this up, if you can see this little white kind of bulbous figure inside, this is the squid's brain. Squids are very, very intelligent for such a small animal. Well, some squids are very, very big, but they have a relatively large um, brain in comparison to their eye size. So their eyes connecting into their brain. So they have awesome adaptations that make them a pretty cool creature of the deep blue. Again, we learned about the awesome appendages and the siphon that they use, controlling the muscles in their skin to help them change color. Lots of cool adaptations to help them swim through the water. And that's what makes squids an awesome creature. All right, thank you guys so much for joining us for our 1 p.m. live demonstration. Check out our website, azscience.org, to see more experiments that you could be doing at home. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to type those up and send them in the chat. Thank you so much for checking it out. Again, my name is Gabby, and have a great rest of your day.